there's no one there to tell you what's happening. How have you found it, if you're comfortable sharing, positively powerful to sit with that great uncertainty versus profoundly destabilizing? I mean, if, and uh, that's not... I'm not using that as a justification for having this overlay of like a shamanistic uh, cosmology or anything like that in, in every experience. But what is the, I guess, internal, the, the self-talk or anything that allows you to, helps you to turn that into a positive experience as opposed to a negative one or an overwhelming one? Well, if you can, the more that you can direct these things toward values that will help your life. I think that that's generally good because too much destabilization isn't healthy. Um, I remember the first really, 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 really strong ayahuasca experience I had. Um, I had, I had a bit of that. I remember my friend was watching Seinfeld, um, <laughs> in, in the other room and, uh, and I came out of it thinking and when you say ayahuasca are you talking about the uh, pharmawasca, pharmawasca synthetic dmt with meclobamide mm -hmm. and um and coming out of it and thinking well that that was a deconstruction of everything i have ever known and ever will know i didn't know who i was i didn't know what year it was i um time had completely deconstructed i saw my entire life as a book with each day a page in the book and you know just these profound reconceptualizations of every aspect of being and then you come out of it and what do you do do you go and join your friend and watch seinfeld <laughs> i think that'd be very <laughs> difficult to do i don't know or maybe maybe the easiest thing in the world i i, I wasn't inside your experience at the time oh, what did you do i apprehensively watched some Seinfeld and then decided against the Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Newman. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you, what did you gain from that experience? If anything, I mean, what, what did you take from that? Well, it's okay. Here's what I would say about that experience is that I am not, I, I don't know what to do with experiences of that magnitude. And I'm reluctant to find a framework that explains it. So I don't know that it's especially beneficial. It, I don't think it was damaging, but I can say that at lower doses, ayahuasca has had much more practical benefit and sometimes almost cartoonishly practical. Could you give an example? Yes. Uh, I remember once... I had taken a low dose, I believe it was 45 milligrams of DMT with 300 milligrams of meclobamide. And, um, and I was writing and I was really enjoying everything that I was writing. And I was thinking, damn, I'm getting some good writing done. I'm really working through ideas in, a, in an effective way. I'm loving this, but you know what would make it that much better is a little nicotine gum because I like nicotine gum and uh, you know, that will make my thoughts sharper that will give me enhanced clarity and it will make my writing even better if I'm chewing nicotine gum. And then I looked at the nicotine gum and I thought, but then this is the thought that underlies all addiction. This is the thought that underlies all compulsive behaviors. I want more. It's not good enough the way it is. I want it to be that much better, but it will never be good enough. And the nicotine gum is already inside me. I can create my own nicotine gum. And I dramatically threw the nicotine gum across the room. I was like, I don't need this. I already am the nicotine gum. And, uh, and you know, that's, I think why these things can have an anti-addictive effect. One of the reasons is, you know, there's all sorts of pharmacological reasons, but even psychologically, they teach you that all these things are inside you and that you have the ability to create these sorts of drug effects on your own to some extent that it's all you know, it's, it's your acetylcholine receptors that are being activated. You can activate them on your own. You know, it's, it's a yeah, flashback to Shulgin with the sugar crystals on the right. orange juice. That's amazing. I'd never heard that story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very practical thing is don't chew nicotine gum to make your writing better because it's already inside you and you just can create it yourself. Um, 
And I've had so many of those, those sorts of low level practical experiences. And I really like that because it's not about time. Like, what can I tell you about how my sense of time was deconstructed? I could go on and on about it and you wouldn't understand and I wouldn't understand. And it, it exists outside of the realm of any sort of comfortable comprehension, at least for me. Whereas, um, thoughts about addiction, about how you construct your life, about how you ration your love or how much love you have or how to integrate love into your existence. Those are things that you have practical applications. And I think that's important are the practical applications.